uh, to be recorded and then we can place it on the World Forestry Congress website for the benefit of those who couldn't join the meeting today. Um, you may know that uh, participants are, are, are view only and you can interact with each other and with the panel through the question and answers. Uh, please uh, use the Q&A function to submit any question for the attention of the speakers uh, and uh, they will be answered either in writing or in the course of the discussion and please use uh, the chat box for sharing technical information, be they related to the conduct or be they related to uh, any technical experience, uh, uh, any technical difficulties that you may experience, and the support team will uh, try to help you with that. Uh, and please keep uh, your more microphones muted all the time. Uh, that helps the communication enormously. Uh, thank you very much indeed. And uh, without further ado, I would like to uh, uh, announce the program for today that will uh, begin with two uh, opening statements uh, delivered by uh, the Minister of the Korea Forest Service and the Director of the Forestry Division of FAO. Uh, I would like to introduce to you the two speakers, uh, Mr. Yeong Am Choi. He is the head of the Korea Forest Service, a new uh, minister, and we would like to take this opportunity to congratulate him on his recent appointment to this position. Uh, uh, Mr. Choi is a longtime KFS um, employee and he has been working uh, with the organization for several years uh, holding very important and senior positions uh, from forest protection to forest use welfare and general planning uh, i would like to invite you that after his statement which is pre-recorded uh, given the time difference between new york and korea uh, we would be listening to uh, my dear colleague miss uh, Meta wilkie who is the director of the forestry uh, division uh, a national of denmark and uh, yeah, he worked, she worked most of her life for FAO and she also worked in Africa and uh, Asia as a consultant in forest management and her rich career also took her for a shorter period of time to UNEP where she worked as a director. And uh, she is well known about many of her contributions to international forestry, but maybe best about the enormous contribution she made to the Global Forest Resources Assessment. So with this, I would hand over the, uh, the virtual microphone to the Minister of KFS, followed by Ms. Mette Wilke. Yes, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted to welcome you all to this UNFF 16 side event, promoting forest as the first in a green and resilient recovery, subtitled Building Momentum for the 15th World Forestry Congress. The world is facing growing challenges to its health and future. Against this backdrop, forest importance has grown. They cannot be overemphasized. Crucially, forests are being recognized as a key nature-based solution to tackle the ever-worsening climate crisis. The COVID-19 pandemic's prolonged impact is emphasizing the importance of building back better in a post-COVID-19 world. I am certain that building a green, resilient future with forest is our necessary path. This is the theme of the 15th World Forestry Congress. Recently, the Secretariat has announced new days. The Congress will be from May 2nd through 6th, 2022. Now, uh, with these new days set, the Korea Forest Service will increase its effort to assemble a successful Congress with the FAO. This event is part of the effort to build the momentum toward a vibrant and dynamic Congress. The Republic of Korea has plenty of experience and know-how in restoring forests. 
Korea successfully transformed large swaths of degraded land into forest, which has garnered us a reputation for the most successful example of forest restoration in global history. We stand ready to share our experience and knowledge with the world. Accordingly, the 15th WFC will be an ideal platform for the global forest community to gather, exchange experiences and ideas about all aspects of forest and produce recommendations applicable at national, regional, and global levels. Distinguished members of the panel and online participants, you have a wide range of experience and in-depth knowledge in forestry and related fields. Kindly stay involved with the WFC preparations and provide valuable comments and inputs on how uh, the WFC can bring stakeholders together to address challenges, leverage partnerships, and promote the forest as a central pillar in the global and national recovery efforts. Your inputs are indeed building blocks of a, a successful Congress in 2022. As the host country, the Republic of Korea, will make sure to hold the 15th World Forestry Congress in a venue that is well protected from risks of the infection. It will have robust preventive measures in place, allowing for in-person meetings and interaction among participants. We very much look forward to seeing you in person at the Congress, bustling with life, energy, and lively exchanges. In conclusion, I would like to take this opportunity to express my appreciation on behalf of the Korea Forest Service to the UNFF Secretariat for providing us with a valuable opportunity to discuss the important role of forest in national and global recovery efforts. I wish you all fruitful discussions today. Thank you. I thank the Minister of KFS for his opening remarks and invite Meta Virki to take the floor. Thank you very much, uh, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure to be here to deliver some opening remarks at this event on promoting forest as the force in a green and resilient recovery, building momentum for the 15th World Forestry Congress. In responding to Minister Toy and on behalf of the Food and Agriculture Organization, I'd like to express our sincere gratitude to the host country the Republic of Korea, and to the Korea Forest Service. I know they may not be here to hear me, but I'm hoping that these thanks will be passed on to them. And want to thank them for the very close collaboration we've had in terms of preparation for the Congress and for their steadfast efforts in absorbing those implications we've had on the pandemic and thereby rescheduling the Congress in a timely and efficient manner. We all hoped that 2020 was going to be the super year for nature. That didn't happen due to the pandemic, but 2021 certainly will be. On June 5, we will have the official launch of the UN Decade on Ecosystem Restoration. Later this year, we hope to have the IUCN World Congress. We have the COPs, the conventions of parties, uh, the, of the meetings of the Rio conventions, my apologies. Uh, but we also have the Food System Summit, the UN High Level uh, Dialogue on Energy. This means that having the 15th World Forestry Congress in 2022 will give us a unique opportunity to provide a comprehensive and rich analysis of the outcome of all of these global events from a forest sector perspective. The Congress will also allow stakeholders to highlight innovative work in the sector and to launch new collaborations and initiatives. More importantly, perhaps, is that the Congress will be in a position to develop concrete recommendations to support the implementation of actions under the International Development 
and environmental agenda. Distinguished participants, the COVID-19 pandemic has highlighted the urgent need to tackle interlinked global issues such as human health, climate change, biodiversity loss, and inequality in a coordinated manner. As the global community responds to these crises, uh, we must ensure that the COVID-19 recovery efforts are not just holistic, but that they're also inclusive, sustainable, and green. Forests and the forest-based sectors have a key role to play in this regard, and the Congress could usefully put strong emphasis on the growing recognition of the fact that human health is dependent on ecosystem health. And we need to take a holistic approach to both of these in the context of the One Health approach. But if the aspiration for a green and resilient future is to materialize, all stakeholders, including the UN system, must take decisive action to build forest-based solutions into their strategies, including the recovery strategies. We know that over 1.6 billion people around the world look to forests as a major natural resource that provide them with income and with livelihoods. It's true for them and it's true for all of us that if the crisis continues unabated, the reliance on forest goods and services is also likely to see a sharp increase. This raises the question of how we ensure that forests continue to play a central role in people's well being without raising the risk of further deforestation and further degradation. In today's event, this distinguished groups of panelists will discuss some of these challenges and how they can be prioritized in the discussions at the 15. World Forestry Congress. Through this event, you will all be able to help shape the Congress preparations. And I really encourage you to participate, participate actively in the discussion. Distinguished participants, in closing, let me re-emphasize that FAO remains strongly committed to supporting national and global recovery efforts from the current pandemic. And we strongly believe that the World Forestry Congress will be an opportunity for the global community to identify ways for forests to provide many of the solutions that we need to build a green, healthy and resilient future. Please join us all in this noble effort. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mette. And uh, having the scene set by the two excellent presentations, uh, let me invite you, dear participants, to uh, listen to the Secretary General of the Congress, who would explain uh, the, the preparations that uh, we have been able to accomplish so far. Uh, Dr. Eonsik Park is the Director General of the International Affairs Bureau of the Korea Forest Service, and he is the Secretary General of the Congress. And being a lifetime KFS employee, he spent uh, the last three years as deputy uh, director of the Asian Forest Cooperation Organization, promoting also cooperation on the regional level. So I would like to invite you to listen uh, to his pre-recorded presentation. Good morning. My name is Enshik Park. I'm a director general of the International Affairs Bureau of Korea Forest Service. It is my great privilege to share with you the preparation plan for the 15th World Forestry Congress. Today, I would like to present the outline of the 15th World Forestry Congress. My presentation will also explain programs, expectations, response measures to COVID-19, and important dates regarding the Congress. As you are aware, the 15th World Forestry Congress was originally scheduled for May this year, but due to the COVID-19, it has been postponed to next year. Korea Forest Service and FAO will host the Congress, and recently we decided to organize the Congress on May 2nd to 6, 2022. The main participants will be representatives of each country, international organization, and civil society. We are also welcoming participants from research institutes, academia, and NGOs. The theme of the Congress is building a green, 
healthy and resilient future with the forest. Under this main theme, as you see on the screen, there are six sub themes for the Congress. Sub theme one will manage it reversing deforestation and forest degradation. Sub theme two will cover nature based solutions for climate change adaptation and mitigation and biodiversity conservation. In sub theme three, the green pathway to growth and sustainability will be discussed. Subsim 4 will involve forest and human health. The focus of Subsim 5 will be on managing and communicating forest information and knowledge. Subsim 6 will include enhancing forest management and cooperation without boundaries. The World Forest Congress will review the global issues and identify key measures to enhance role of forest. The 15th World Forest Congress will be filled with a variety of events and programs. 15 special events will be prepared including opening and closing ceremony, high-level dialogue, ministerial forum and private sector investment forum, also plenary and poster session, side event, and exhibition will be operated during the Congress. The 15th World Forestry Congress will ensure that forest is an essential element of sustainable development. Through the Congress, we will renew commitments and promote collaborations across borders and boundaries. Outcome documents will be developed through an open and participatory process. We can highlight the role of forest to build green and healthy society in post-COVID-19 era. We hope COVID-19 will be over before May next year. However, we will continue to closely monitor the COVID-19 situation. Protection of participant safety will be the first priority during the Congress. To protect participants, we will use the latest technologies such as micro sanitizer gates and summer imaging cameras. And we will also keep social distancing rules. We hope to meet in person, but to help more people participate, if necessary, live broadcast and virtual sessions might be considered. We kindly invite all submissions. New submissions will be opened soon. Submission for side events a point post will be resumed from late April this year. Video submission will be available until early September. And submission for exhibition booths will be announced soon. Early bird registration will be extended to the end of November this year. If you have any questions, you can check the email or go to the official website on the screen. I wish you a continuous support for the upcoming Congress. I hope that we can see each other in the 15th World Forestry Congress next year in Seoul, Korea. Thank you. I thank the Secretary General for his introduction of the program preparation so far. And I would like to invite all of you to watch a short video which has been prepared to promote the Congress. Dear colleagues, could you uh, please start the trailer?
Thank you very much, uh, dear participants. I think you would agree with me that this little video spoke about everything that has been mentioned today at the UNFF 16 session. And indeed, these are the key challenges in front of us. In order to have the World Forestry Congress best organized and prepared to discuss them, uh, we invited uh, a, a group of esteemed uh, colleagues from all over the world to join this exercise today in the form of a panel discussing about some of the key challenges and the solutions to them that are laying ahead of us. Uh, let me introduce uh, today's panelists, uh, starting with Marie-Louise Avanatienso, who is an Associate Professor of Forestry and Agroforestry and Senior Program Officer at the African Forest Forum Secretariat in Nairobi, Kenya. Before joining AFF, she served as lecturer at the Department of Forestry, University of Shan, Cameroon, and led many research and training projects in collaboration with international partners. She has also served as member in governing bodies for regional networks, such as the African Network for Agriculture, Agroforestry, and Natural Resources. The other panelist today is Mirna. Cunningham, who is a medical doctor and works as a public health uh, practitioner with the mosquito indigenous population on the Atlantic coast of Nicaragua. She served as the chair of the Permanent Forum of Indigenous Issues, as well as an advisor to the president of the General Assembly during the World Conference on Indigenous Peoples at the UN in 2014. Currently, she is the president of the Fund for the Development of Indigenous Peoples of Latin America and the Caribbean, and chairperson of the Center for Autonomy and Development of Indigenous Peoples. Marta Gavorska uh, holds an MSc in Forestry. Her professional activities have been connected with both policy developments and implementation, particularly in the field of sustainable forest management. Marta represents the state forests of Poland at different international fora, both at European and global scales. She is currently serving as vice chairperson of the UNEC Committee on Forests and the Forest Industries. We have on the panel uh, Dr. John Parotta, who holds a PhD and has been engaged in research worldwide for over 30 years with focus on tropical forest ecology and management, traditional knowledge, and forest landscape restoration. A research scientist with the USDA Forest Service, he has served as National Research Program Leader for International Science Issues since 2001. Mr. Parotta is the president of the International Union of the Forest Research Organizations, UFRO, since 2019. And last but not least, I would like to welcome to the panel uh, Her Excellency Ambassador uh, Kitty Sweeb, who holds uh, a Master of Law in International Business and Trade Law. She held important positions in the government of Suriname. She was a member of several national negotiating committees and helped to establish national environmental and foreign policies in the office of the president. She, as permanent representative of her country to the United Nations, is leading as chairperson the work of the UNFF 16 and 17, and I would like to thank her in particular for finding time in this busy period of the UNFF 16 session. So thank you all for joining uh, this panel discussion today. And we uh, suggested a couple of lead questions for the panelists to address, and we would like to hope that you, the participants, will enrich the list of questions and uh, benefit from a discussion with each other and with uh, the panelists. Let me ask you the first question and invite Your Excellency, uh, Ambassador Sweeb, uh, uh, to answer the following question, which is, uh, if you... Uh, can identify one issue, in your view, what is the main challenge in the forest sector that requires our collective attention and what is required to implement solutions? Over to you, Ambassador. Well, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Kosa. I'm uh, very pleased to be here uh, among the distinguished, uh, this distinguished uh, company. Uh, to dive right in um, on the question. Uh, so the importance of forests for the well-being of people and the planet is of course undeniable. 
in addition to the numerous benefits, forests provide us with clean air and fresh water, food, and shelter. Yet despite their vital importance, we keep losing forests. The world has lost, as you may know, 178 million hectares of forests since 1990, which is an area about the size of Libya. And one main challenge for the forest sector is to establish the full value of forest. I think this is an important um, issue that has not been fully addressed yet. We need a full assessment of the value of multiple benefits of forest, one that would capture not only the value of timber, but also its climate regulatory functions, watershed protection, biodiversity, conservation, combating desertification and land degradation, as well as socioeconomic benefits of forests, such as poverty eradication, food security, and energy. As of today, the full contribution of forests to ecosystems, society, and sustainable development remains drastically underestimated. And this is owing to a lack of methodologies and socioeconomic data. Many benefits and services provided by forests are currently not measured or valued in quantifiable terms. Once we have the real value of forests established, however, it won't be any longer profitable for the potential forest owner to convert forest land into large scale production of agricultural commodities or for pasture. That is one of the main paths to stop deforestation and at the same time, ensure that forests will be a powerful tool for combating climate change and not a major contributor to rising CO2 levels. And in terms of the solutions, how do we get there? Um, governments, NGOs, private sector and consumers have major roles to play. Governments are particularly important and must create a robust regulatory framework and create space for different incentives, schemes and payment for ecosystem services. The United Nations Strategic Plan for Forest, as you know, was created to provide such a global framework for action. For example, the Global Forest Goal 5, as contained in the, the plan, promotes governance frameworks to implement sustainable forest management, fulfilling the international commitments uh, and thus reaching its goals and targets. It's a, a challenge, but also a solution. And uh, to close, um, it, there is a very concrete way that is right in front of us in the coming months that we could put that we could take action, which is of course um, in the framework of the the the, the climate convention, uh, where the implementation of Article Six of the Paris Agreement uh, will come up again, as you probably know, in 2019 COP25. We failed as a as a, as an international community to to come to an agreement, but this is exactly what we will have to do now this year in Glasgow to um, to 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 work out that implementation and to to find uh, the parameters and 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 uh, the foundation to indeed. Um, uh, create those carbon uh, prices uh, because that's that's what it comes down to. This is going to be a, a, a concrete way in which we can actually put the value on our forests and and thus uh, uh, come come to terms with that uh, that tension that exists between. Um, recognizing that we have global a global good, but at the same time, we must also, developing countries especially, we must also be able to use that natural resource for our development. And I think that is the thing that we need to try to, uh, to find a solution for. I'll stop here. Thank you much. Thank you very much, Ambassador. Uh, we haven't uh, organized a voting for this panel, but if we had, 
uh, you most likely would have heard 71 yeses from the participants listening to your to your response and guidance on this. I noted that you mentioned the importance of, of the various stakeholders and stakeholders groups. Uh, this panel is actually representing those various stakeholders. So I'm wondering uh, any of the panelists is willing to uh, uh, join Ambassador Sweep's uh, opening remarks. I see Mirna's uh, phone uh, or microphone going on, please. Yes, I would say that one thing that uh, we from indigenous peoples would like to see is investment in land tenure of collective land tenure of indis indigenous peoples. And this is because forests on indigenous territories are fundamental to mitigate climate change and conserve biodiversity. Just only in Latin America, we occupy as indigenous peoples more than 404 million of acres. And this represents a fifth of the, of, the, of the land in our region. Traditionally, because of the combination of different factors, these forests have been better protected than other. And this is not something that we are saying as indigenous peoples. It has been mentioned by experts and a recent study that was, that was done by FAO um, review different information and prove that in territories that in forests that are on indigenous territories have less deforestation rate than others. So I would say that something that is very important is investment in land tenure, rights of indigenous peoples. Of course, from indigenous people's point of view, this is not, we do not see one isolated solution. So if you invest in land tenure, this has to be combined with governance, with policies, with, with respect of traditional knowledge, and of course, the support of the traditional management system that indigenous peoples have applied. Thank you very much, Mina, wonderful. Any further intervention from the panel members? Yes, yes. Uh, I think uh, as uh, NGOs, uh, we have to support also country in building case uh, for making government seeing forests as an essential uh, service sector. That should also receive support during and after this crisis in order to continue supplying population with the essential products and even services from the forest. And this has to be done also by seeing how to uh, highlighting and strengthening the linkages between the forest product and these essential services and goods needed for this period. We have, we have many reports highlighting the contribution of forests for, for example, uh, produ producing uh, personal protection uh, equipment. And we are seeing contribution of forests in developing, uh, producing, uh, let's say, uh, medicine uh, and also. Um, uh, essential oils and many products, uh, pharmaceutical products from forests. So uh, those information are really important. Uh, government also needs from the support of NGOs and maybe research institutions to see how to have evidence communication to show the link between conserving the forest and preventing such diseases. So it's important that those information are really documented so that the government could have the right information to guide their decision and even their policy. Thank you. Thank you very much, my Louise. Marta. Uh, yes, good evening from Warsaw. Uh, let me first thank you very much for uh, uh, giving the opportunity to be a part of this interesting event. And let me congratulate for addressing this important subject and also pass some uh, 
thank you words to the Korean Forest Service for this nice invitation and all efforts in the preparation of the upcoming 15 World Forestry Congress. Uh, the information uh, that we had today were, are very uh, are very inviting and uh, uh, we are already looking forward to this event and hopefully uh, uh, it can be accomplished the next year. Uh, getting to the subject, uh, of course, the experience from the uh, COVID-19 pandemic has shown that the implication go far more than health and well-being and uh, from uh, from from many perspective also from government but also from the practitioners they shows and exposed that the complex global interdependencies of human with nature and in our views underpin the importance of integration of the all dimensions of sustainable forestry management, economic, social, and environmental. And of course, the challenges are very difficult today, even more than before. The threats of climate change is not less urgent today than yesterday. And this is actually what we would like to highlight from the, our perspective as one of the main challenge that needs the urgent actions. For example, in Poland, to be more practical, we are noticing an increased number of disasters caused by extreme weather events, such as droughts, storm, floods, hurricanes, or other natural phenomena like fire or serious bark beetles outbreaks. Only in 2017, because of windfall, we lost over one night more than 120,000 of forest hectares. This resulted in almost 10 million cubic meters of devastated wood and enormous efforts to clean up their area. More than 4,000 people was involved. And of course, the to, more efforts has been needed to replant the destroyed forests. Actually, some work has been still going on and it is expected to be completed in 2023. Those are challenges that in the field that are already uh, happening and they need to be dealt with. So we see that the forest disturbance is important, not only from the forest health perspective, but also it affects the delivery of products and services, the issues which were mentioned also by my previous speakers. And in consequences, the users, the end users as the social and society at large. So as I mentioned, this topic has to be seen not only in the terms of current trends and challenge, but also for the prediction of the future situation and preparedness of the sector to deal with them. Collective actions could include regional monitoring and the development and implementation of adaptive management strategies for enhanced forest health and resilience, while recognizing that much of what might happen is unfortunately beyond of our immediate control. This could be linked with the forest landscape restoration as the one of the key tools in climate change adaptations. But of course, we need to remember that the challenge is global, but solutions should be applicable for all levels, including regional and local especially. And I believe that the examples or stories like uh, I, I presented can be collected through around the world. And I think that this also should be communicated in very concrete ways. The consequences, the happenings are taking, uh, happening, uh, are taking short time, but the consequences that we have to deal with are taking much more time to recover. Thank you for your attention for this moment. Thank you very much, Marta. I'm wondering uh, what science's contribution would be at this stage. John, over to you. Yes, th thank you, Peter. <clears throat> yeah, clearly, the you know, from our perspective, the conversion of forests and ongoing degradation of forest landscapes severely undermines our efforts to both conserve and sustainably manage biodiversity and maintain the provision of forest-related goods and services that are essential um, to building back better 
and as well as attaining the sustainable development goals. Um, I think this is this is something we, we all realize and it's clear that we, we must stop the bleeding, otherwise the patient uh, patient will die. Uh, and but we know that we can we can only make progress on this front if we work closely with uh, both policymakers and our colleagues in other sectors, including uh, among others the agricultural sector, which is extremely important, uh, spatial planners, as well as such sectors as finance, energy, water and transportation. We all have a stake in this. Uh, I only mentioned you know, some of the sectors, we had many more, including civil society and um, of course, uh, local and indigenous communities. Um, science uh, science has, does have a, an important role to play in, in this. You know, we, the scientific community and, and academics more, more generally um, have for decades been providing or collecting and providing um, data and, and insights uh, that, that, that speak to the, the underlying causes and impacts of forest loss and degradation. Uh, perhaps we haven't done as good a job in communicating this as, as we should. Um, you know, the, the scientific community is also a generator of innovation um, that, that is needed at this point to develop uh, viable solutions to, the, to these problems. Um, solutions based both, not just on, on formal scientific knowledge, but also traditional science. Um, the public and decision makers urgently need this innovation and this dialogue between, uh, between knowledge systems, between the forest science community and, and many other stakeholders um, if, if we are to ultimately you know, conserve, sustainably manage and, and sustain our planet's precious forest resources. I could say more, but I'm sure there's maybe some other questions that I'd like to address. Thank you very much, John. Uh, in, in in the responses, uh, uh, the, the 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 current pandemic and and the post COVID world and the building back better uh, appeared quite uh, prominently. I'm wondering. What do you think about uh, the, the, the best and concrete ways to really uh, put uh, the forest sector into the center of attention and make it as an engine of recovery uh, from the COVID-19 pandemic? Uh, what's your take on that, uh, Marie Louise? Perhaps starting with you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Peter. Uh, I think we have been, uh, there are many information, many reports at the regional, at different level of what forests can contribute. But what is still missing is actually country specific information about how forests actually can contribute to social and even all the, all the, 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 the all can offset all these problems related to the pandemic. If we can have that information, at country level, that could actually guide the policymaker to prioritize this policy and support them to continue to provide such services. I think that it's really important that we see how to make such uh, thing, to make policymakers see that this forest has to be on top, has to the essential services provided by forest have to be there, has to be highlighted so that they can guide the, uh, the decision making. And also I have, for example, many uh, African countries, you are seeing uh, some species being there highlighted like baobab can provide vitamin C. So developing value chains of this product cannot only support people to be using continually this product to boost their immune system, but also, creating job opportunity and raise, uh, raising, uh, I mean, uh, generating income for livelihood. So it's really important to document in this country, in dryland area, baobab and many other products that can really, really serve this purpose. We also have this community-based enterprise development that could really help also people at the grassroots level, at different levels, to build their resilience to the system. So I think this, too important, uh, what should we keep in mind here is to see really how at country level, what are the potential, what are the contribution 
of the forest in the specific country, different type of forest, the country in addressing the challenges and all the problems caused by COVID-19 and therefore documenting this to guide decision making. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Marie-Louise. I think what you have just said resonated very well with the broader picture that Ambassador Sweep described at the very beginning of the panel discussion. Uh, Mirna, over to you. Yes, of course, I, I would say that the, what we have seen during COVID is an increase of, of violence in, in indigenous communities. So if we want to consider how to how to really come out of this situation i would say that one one investment should be on in compensation of environmental services and the the money the community forestry work that they, they that have proven to reduce deforestation and degradation and if you compare the price of the Green Climate Fund is paying for carbon, and you compare it with the investment on environmental services and the, the community management, forestry community management, it's, it's much less. It's, it's much cheaper. So there should be a combination of policies that will combine the formal recognition of land rights, the support of to, on governance to, to really reduce the illegal occupation of territories, the application of free prior and informed consent, if we really want to advance towards development in forest. Another solution is to compensate the indigenous peoples and, and local communities for the effort that they are already doing, to putting into protection and administration of the forest and try to build agreement, diff, different type of partnership with their, with their leadership so they can really develop together with other stakeholders, a holistic and integral plan to manage the areas where they live. I think if we do not do this in the future, we may invent different kinds of investment that come top down, and we will see an increase of violence and um, tension in the forest. And I would say that the main effort should be to reduce those tensions, reduce that violence. And the only way is respecting the right of the ancestral owners of those territories and forests. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mirna. Any, any further comments for the panel on this question, Marta? Just to complete with another idea, of course, the current historic time we face with the COVID-19 crisis has shown how interconnected and interdependent we are. And also that we need to look for a workable solution. And the way we see this in Poland is that from our side, we can contribute by showcasing, oh, oh, excuse me, <laughs> excuse me for a sec, oh. <laughs> by showcasing, the role and the benefits of sustainable forestry management, which that the concept which we practice uh, from, from many decades and the concept that provide a stable framework in delivering a variety of social, economic and environmental benefits. And to dwell further on it, we think that the range of the potential benefits of forests and wood products in mitigating climate change has to be better promoted, especially outside of the forestry sector, towards policymakers and the general public. And this might be also a mission for the upcoming World Forest Congress. More cross-sectoral approach in discussing forest contribution in facing those challenges, taking into account 
others' arguments and concerns regarding, for example, possible trade trade off between different forest values, but also reminding that public goods revenge public expenditure. And of course, showing the examples that generate win-win outcomes for all to promote forest-based solutions better. Thank you. Thank you very much, Marta. Uh, Ambassador, over to you. Uh, thank you so much. Um, Yes, of course, we, uh, when we think about recovery, we need to indeed uh, take a closer look at what we're doing nationally at home, uh, much more than internationally. And I fully agree with uh, what the previous speakers uh, have, have emphasized. Uh, I just wanted to um, highlight that I think that uh, we, we may benefit if we approach the whole uh, crisis and solution uh, from a more positive way, because there is also a silver lining. Uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has created opportunities to build our future better, uh, create jobs, uh, and, and, and build a sustainable and environmentally friendly economy. Um, because it, uh, the, 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 the crisis highlighted all the gaps. Um, and so I, I think uh, countries could uh, integrate the forestry investment into their national recovery strategies. Um, and of course, based on uh, the national conditions and priorities in each country. Uh, so in other words, um, before the crisis hit, we were all very focused and busy on with the sustainable development goals, and we had plans and projects, uh, etc. Uh, now I think we should make uh, be careful that we don't create two uh, recovery processes. We may have to rethink what we're exactly doing with the sustainable, how to achieve those uh, goals and incorporate um, the, the recovery process uh, as, as, a, as a result of the crisis in that and maybe have to change it. I think uh, that that would be important for governments particularly uh, to keep track of. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador. I think, uh... You are very, very right that seeing the opportunity in this challenge is very important. This is the way uh, to look at the challenges and this is the way to address them, to see what opportunities they are offering. And as we heard from all of you so far, there are many. John, are you willing to? Yeah, sure. I think, uh, I mean, a lot, uh, everything, pretty much everything has been said that, that I would have liked to say, except that perhaps uh, on the topic of, um, the forest landscape restoration, which of course is receiving a lot of attention and a fair bit of investment, I think in, in the current in the current circumstances, uh, we have a, a really good opportunity to uh, to promote those activities. Uh, of course, those that are both well planned and well targeted, and adequately uh, engage with with the desired. Recipient of recipients of benefits, namely the, the local communities. I think we have a, an opportunity to, to frame those both as a short-term, um, short-term economic apt, uh, opportunities for for engaged rural communities, as well as probably more importantly, as longer-term investments in sustainable livelihoods. So there's a short-term and a longer-term aspect to to, to our activities in, in forest landscape restoration area, which I think uh, should be kept in mind. Thank you. Thank you very much, John. Uh, I see uh, supporting comments in the in the Q and A, and I see one uh, question in the chat. Uh, why I encourage you to use uh, the, the Q and A for questions. I think the question itself is very interesting. Uh, it is unclear to whom it is addressed, so I read it out, hoping that uh, one of you, or maybe more than one of you, is willing to take this. The question uh, is, how can the rural population be empowered to build a sustainable forest ecosystem, given the scenario that most of them practice agriculture? Yeah, 
you know. Maybe, yeah, maybe I would answer, but building on what the ambassador said, said, I do believe that COVID offered an important opportunity because it proved in, in a lot of the countries that there is a resilience among indigenous and local communities that lives in the forest. They made use of the forest to protect from the virus, but also to find solutions for food security, for medicines, for in exchange of traditional knowledge. So I do believe that um, if we go back to the question, what we do need is to link the outcome of this forest Congress with the SDG, but especially with SDG number 16, that calls for strong institutions, calls for justice and calls for peace. And I think that is what we are saying from indigenous communities, local communities, Afro-descendants community. We do expect, from a, for, from a Congress of this type after COVID, that there should be formal recognition of our land rights, that there should be clear roadmaps of how to support the, the traditional ways in which we have protect forests, that there should be mechanisms to demarcate our for our forests so we can really continue protecting, protecting biodiversity, protecting traditional medicine, protecting different type of food, non-timber products in the, in the forest. So I do believe that this is an opportunity to work together with local community, work together with indigenous peoples and support our resilience and support our capacity to really face these kind of challenges. And if you look at us as right holders, of course, then we can talk about empowerment and we can talk about different ways of governance in which we combine our capacity with the states, with the governments, with other different actors. Thank you very much, Mirna. Thank you. Very, very comprehensive answer, I think. Uh, if no other panelist is willing to take the floor on this. Oh, yes, Marta, over to you. Uh, yes, I think that in the addition to the recovery after COVID-19, we are also observing that the forestry sector is currently undergoing a deep redefinition of roles and expectations for the services provide. However, the discussion on the demands for new or for different services shadows out the importance of the financing. So what I would like to underline that the both the roles, but also the needs of current and future actors involved, I mean owners, industries, indigenous community, uh, researchers has to be recognized better and to address all aspects so as to ensure the positive effects on the end. Thank you. Thank you, Marta. And uh, if I may, uh, building on what uh, both you and Mirna said regarding what the Congress could usefully do, uh, I would like to ask you uh, about what would you think as a good outcome of the Congress, what would you describe as a meaningful result, uh, a good outcome of this Congress, why we should organize this and what should we achieve by organizing this Congress? What would be the good outcome and how could that be brought to the attention of the global community, not only in the forest sector, but beyond? Can I start? Yes, please. OK, uh, thank you. Uh, I think uh, one very important thing is also to note that um, the fact that the Congress has been postponed to next year is also an opportunity to continue building experience that could be on the impact of this pandemic and also on how people are coping 
with the, with the pandemics. So the one important thing would be to share those experience and to see how, uh, how people, uh, how we can get something important, best practices to be shared. That is to be shared widely, that, that is one. But another thing is that there are already solution, some solution that are being shared. And so there is also a, an opportunity, a door open for people, for countries, for region to pilot some of this uh, measure and see how is it, how is working, and what are the challenges in implementing this solution? What could be done? How could the challenge be? Uh, could, how the challenges could be actually uh, mitigated? So all those are really important, and this iterative process is really important if we are looking for that inclusive uh, green and also um, a sustainable recovery. So we need just uh, so, so this time could really help to have uh, such iterative process. But also the pandemic should not be the focus. We also continue to see how other aspects of the forestry sector ha has evolved from since the last uh, Congress till now on how, what are the trends we are looking for of this uh, other uh, aspect of forestry uh, in this, uh, in the pace of, uh, the COVID-19. So those are some ideas I would like to share. Thank you. Thank you very much, Paris. John, over to you. Yeah, thank you. I'd like to just uh, agree with what uh, what Marie Louise said just just said, and I think the, the World Forestry Congress offers a really good opportunity to promote and highlight sessions and communications efforts uh, that focus on, on meaning, meaningful exchanges and of knowledge and experience between policymakers, forest managers, forest dependent communities, the private sector, financial institutions, and then of course the scientific community. Um, you know, the, the, I think the world is, I think, the, I think there's also a, a very strong need to, to project this Congress outward to the general public. Uh, the world needs some good news, and I think there's. I think we can find some good news in, in some of the more successful efforts uh, that we've been hearing about. Actually, even in this conversation about um, how local and indigenous communities can serve and serve biodiversity and su uh, successfully, um, uh, you know, su sustainably manage manage forests. So I think I would I would emphasize uh, the need for an outward looking communication strategy. Uh, it's aimed at the general public, um, and and to to think maybe a little outside the box in terms of communications, uh, to think of new and creative ways to 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 tr to really engage with the public. This might include even you know expanding into uh, into the, the visual arts and, and music. Um, I think it's I think it's very important to generate some broader public support for, for forest conservation, sustainable management, and forest restoration. And we're going to get there if we involve a broader public, and, and including those of us who are whose consumption patterns um, actually are contributing, currently contributing to deforestation. So, just a few ideas there. Thank you very much, John. Indeed, it has been emphasized that uh, there is a need for support and contribution from all stakeholders. And we shouldn't forget that on a number of issues, the general public is one very important stakeholder. Um, Mirna, over to you. Yes, I, I would just like to emphasize on what the previous panelists have mentioned. I think this is a very, very important Congress because it's happening after COVID or during COVID. We don't know what will happen in the next year. But it's also opening the possibilities of exchange be between different knowledge holders. And I think just to be on the panel together with, with um, you can see that we have different experiences that we are bringing to the table on how to manage forests. And I do believe that forests has to play an important role toward the future. And that has to be discussed in this, for, in this Congress. So I do believe that the whole preparatory process 
on, for next, until next year really needs to involve different stakeholders. We need to agree on basic things that can help to uh, reduce in the future another pandemic. We need to agree on the role that forest plays for planetary health. We need to, to agree on the role that different stakeholders play. We need to agree on, on what type of development, what is the model of development that we want to see related with forests in the future. If we do not agree on these issues, before the Congress, we will come out of the Congress with recommendations that will be similar to what we had in the past and will not be able to be implemented. So I do believe that we need a strong communication strategy, but we need a strong process of participatory process towards the, before the, the, the Congress that can help us come out with strong commitments, strong agreed commitments that can really um, ensure the implementation of the recommendations. Thank you very much, Mirna. In fact, you answered also one question that appeared in the Q&A asking about uh, why not now, why to wait one more year and what to do in one year. You gave us a very uh, good guidance on what uh, to use this one year for. Marta, I see your hand, please. Uh, yes, my comments goes very much in the same direction. Uh, I think that the effective communication uh, has uh, both sides. It's not only about speaking, it's also about listening. And uh, I think that the Congress would uh, uh, be a great opportunity uh, that can provide a better platform for listening each other. Uh, we believe that more open approach can help us in presenting the forest sector rather as a node of the forest nexus, a place where different interest crosses and where all stakeholders work together to find an optimal solution. And this could help us to come to the point of breaking a glass ceiling of the communication limited to the sector's boundaries and to go outside with the positive messages to ensure the success of this Congress. And again, I, I try to draw your attention to things which are already going on on the ground at the national level and the regional level many of positive examples that demonstrates benefits, different benefits of the sustainable forestry management exist. And those could be collected and can support efforts in conveying positive message to those who are taking decisions which are very crucial for our future. Thank you. Thank you very much, Marta. Ambassador, may I turn to you? and ask how you see this, uh, the relevance and the importance of the Congress outcome from your current chair. Thank you. Um, yes, I, I couldn't agree more with uh, all of the speakers, Marie-Louise, um, uh, John, Marta, and um, of course, our, our, our uh, representative from the indigenous people. I, I, she disappeared for a second. But uh, I want to underline indeed um, the, the, the uniqueness of the World Forestry Congress is that you bring together uh, so many different uh, segments of the society, interests, uh, and that is the uniqueness. And you, that, that is something that the, the Congress could uh, uh, could exploit, really. Um, it, it is to build cross-border and intersectoral cooperation and partnerships within the forest sectors and also beyond. Um, we know that the main drivers of deforestation lie beyond the forest sector, and therefore the Congress must bring together various stakeholders, uh, not only from the forest community and uh, also encourage participation of representatives from other sectors, including agriculture, energy, finance, mining, et cetera. Um, and to get there, uh, because 
yes, we know it's going to be a year later. But in the meantime, um, the Congress may benefit from the results of uh, other gatherings like the one that we have now, the United Nations Forum on Forest. Um, we, uh, you may have noticed we have um, conducted a preliminary um, assessment of the impact of COVID-19 and it, it, it paints a vastly different picture depending on the region. Uh, this is all valuable information. We are going to, uh, if the forum agrees, we would love to uh, have a, a follow up on this, this um, uh, analysis. And then hopefully when the Congress is being held next year, uh, this information can be used as well. Um, so yeah, that's what I wanted to underline. Uh, don't underestimate the uniqueness and therefore the strength of the Congress to reach uh, different voices and to amplify those voices then at the Congress. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador. And I thank all the panelists also for uh, answering the, the, the questions that popped up in the, in, in the chat and Q&A boxes as we proceeded. Uh, unfortunately, time is not on our side, uh, but uh, I'm wondering if, if the participants are willing to pose uh, any further questions to, to the panelists. I also see several supporting comments appearing in the... Uh, in, in, in the boxes. Uh, I see two uh, questions popping up uh, uh, in, the, in, in the chat box. If, if you don't mind, I would read them out. Uh, how can the Congress support individual tree growers, especially in Africa? What is the impact of the Congress to grassroots tree growers in Africa? I think this is something uh, that we can answer with certainty only after the Congress, but maybe we can speak about the aspirations with which we are organizing this Congress or the, uh, or the expectations of the panelists. Uh, since the question is focusing in Africa, do you mind, Mary Louise, if I invite you to, to start? Yes, thank you, Peter. I think uh, what we are saying here is that the assessment of the impact, for example, of the COVID-19 is not just targeting um, older people, it's also targeting these uh, small grow, tree growers. Uh, they are targeting, we are assessing what is the impact of this COVID-19 or also what could be the contribution of the tree growers in addressing also some challenges associated with the, with the pandemic. So meaning that what is really important is something related main, uh, mainly maybe to another chat we hear uh, we have uh, there on the communication strategy. What type of communication strategy we can put in place so that all the information, all this experience, best practices that will be generated during the Congress can reach uh, these people on the grassroots. And this is possible because the Congress will also be attended by people coming from different countries, representatives from countries, and, uh, and also uh, uh, collaborative uh, plat uh, partnership on forest, all these uh, countries' representatives who can bring back the information. So we think if there is good communication strategy and the outcomes from this, for, uh, this Congress has to be formatted in such way that we have resolution, but we also are agreement, but also we all have the means of implementation, how this resolution uh, and, uh, and decision could be implemented at different level. And this information now can be shared in different websites where uh, people, uh, even uh, institutions participating in this Congress could be used because this institution could be reached through the World Forestry Congress organizer their website should be reached so that all, inform all uh, uh, outcomes, the information generated could be shared widely using the UN platform, uh, the co conference, uh, uh, the 
a convention, Rio Convention also related to platform, all these uh, areas where information could be easily accessible to different people, including these tree growers. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Marie-Louise. Uh, is any other panelist willing to, to respond to this? Uh, if not, then uh, as I mentioned, unfortunately, time is really not on our side uh, and the discussion is extremely rich and, and, and enjoyable. I'm wondering if uh, any of the panelists uh, is, is willing to make uh, a final comment or statement at this stage. Yes. Yes, uh, thank you so much again, Peter. Um, just very briefly, I wanted to, um, first of all, commend you for uh, holding uh, this this webinar, this gathering, uh, and and putting the panel so smartly together, bringing uh, really uh, representatives of the different segments, uh, stakeholders. Um, in in that sense, I um, uh, this is why I decided to participate because I think it's very important to create those linkages between the different organizations, uh, because more than ever, we will be needing uh, much more to cooperate, devise new uh, communication plans. Uh, we've seen in the past year, technology is now uh, getting even more incorporated in our work and we should use that. Uh, and just to emphasize that uh, the Forum on Forest uh, is here to collaborate and cooperate further for any any stakeholder, uh, be it an organization, the, 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 con the Congress, um, uh, tree growers, or indeed the very uh, people that are the guardians of the forest, the indigenous and tribal people. We're here to help connect, make those connections. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador. And if no other panelist is willing to take the floor at this stage, or Mirna is, yeah, I, I would just, I would just like to thank, um, on behalf of indigenous peoples from different parts of the world, for this opportunity. For all of the indigenous peoples that lives in forests, this of the the Congress offers an important opportunity and um, inviting us from the beginning to be part of this process is um, very important and we will make good use of it. So thank you again. And we are willing to really uh, communicate with all of the different stakeholders and try to build something completely different that can ensure more, um, more justice for all of us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mirna. We certainly count on you and on your constituency big time. If, if no further wish for the floor, then let me thank you for uh, the rich discussion. Let me thank also the participants for the comments and questions that, arri that arrived uh, during the discussion. And I have to tell you that we are lucky very lucky that we have recorded this session because it's almost impossible to summarize the richness of the thoughts that were uh, mentioned and raised during the discussion. But I think there were several uh, common elements that we have to take into consideration very seriously when we continue elaborating the, the program. And I think we got very strong guidance to be mindful of the fact that the full value of forest, its full gamut of goods and services need to be understood, be valued, uh, presented, and explained uh, to the various audiences, uh, be they within or outside the profession, mostly outside, obviously. And we need to make sure that we are, in any of our thinking, we are cross-sectoral because most of the driving forces are coming from outside the sector. And we need to find solutions in collaboration and together with those sectors. And it's not only a cross-sectoral dimension that is needed here, but also a cross-stakeholder approach, and we need to have all stakeholders mobilized, and we need to have all stakeholders addressed with proposals and solutions, because the world's uh, forests are 
uh, very diverse, but so are the people who are working with them and living in them or from them. And we need to have an answer and we need to have a solution for all of them. We are in a unique moment now because the COVID-19 created an unprecedented situation and showed us many things, showed us what we have done good or well so far, and showed us also what we haven't done so well so far. And this is the moment to address all those challenges and try to make them part of the post-COVID recovery, where we believe that forests can indeed play a very important role. For that to happen, we of course need to be able to communicate effectively what forests can do and what people working with forests can do for this recovery to be really green and sustainable. And of course, you made a very important point here that we need to work towards an outcome that is not just one outcome, that is something that is really well understood and supported by the multitude of stakeholders and by the multitude of potential participants of the Congress, which as the ambassador said, is able to bring together people from all walks of life who are united in one desire that is caring about the worst forest and caring about the sustainable future. And this is indeed a tremendous challenge. We would like to produce something that is uh, really representing the collective wisdom of this very valuable global community. And that can be taken to several other processes, be they dealing with climate change, desertification, food security, or any other. And we are certainly uh, eager to report to the 17th session of the UNFF next year about the preparations and inviting you uh, by then uh, uh, to the um, to the 15th World Forestry Congress. Our Korean colleagues who are hosting this event uh, uh, trusted me to reassure everybody that they are working tirelessly towards organizing a Congress that is remarkable, that is rich in professional and uh, cultural experience, and that is the safest possible so you all will have a wonderful time and safe and peaceful time in Korea during the Congress in early May 2022. So with that, I thank you all for your time and for your investment. Also my KFS colleagues who were standing in the background ready to answer any logistical questions and all who couldn't join but send their messages through uh, video and all the panelists for the wisdom and for all the participants for listening to us and supporting through this exercise. As mentioned, the outcome will be presented on the Congress website so you can revisit and enjoy the discussion uh, whenever you want to uh, benefit uh, from uh, rich uh, wisdom of uh, excellent panelists. Thank you very much indeed for your attention. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye -bye. I really enjoyed it. Thank you all. Thank you, Thank you very much. Bye-bye. 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 Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Thank you. Mm -hmm.